Hello everyone. Welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel-Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting something very, very interesting. We're going to be painting an ice cream sundae. But the key to this ice cream sundae is it's going to be in a silhouette form and we're literally going to have to use our sight to visualize where we want the specific areas to be. I'll show you what I mean in one second. First, I'd like to talk to you about what we have laid out here. I have my paper towel that I like to keep folded. This is to help me clean off my brushes. We provide you with a plastic apron and all the colors that you'll need to paint the project. We also provide you with brushes, but please feel free to use your own, which I'll be using my own today. So let's just talk about the colors that we have. We're going to provide you with black, which isn't going to be introduced because I've already used it, and I'll explain that in a second. But you will be getting burnt sienna, white, red, umber, raw sienna, and blue, along with the black. Off camera, I have my cup of water. Off to the side here, I have several brushes that I'll be using and talking about today. I have my plastic apron. And we also provide you with the step-by-step -step instructions, as well as access to this video. This is the project we're going to be painting today. It's going to be on an 8x10 canvas. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down all of the different elements that make up this ice cream. And that, to me, is the fun part of the project. This is going to help teach you how to look at things a little bit differently. And as an artist, you're going to be expected to do this for the remainder of your artistic journey. So why not start today with this beautiful ice cream sundae? What we provide you with is an 8x10 canvas that already has the peel on it. What you're going to do is you're going to use the black in either a foam brush that we'll provide you with or a flat brush or even this size flat brush and you're just going to paint the entire canvas black. Once you've painted the entire canvas black, making sure that you paint it around your peel, this is what your canvas should look like. Now, once you have this look, you still can see the actual peel that we have underneath. You're going to take your spatula that we'll provide you with. You're going to dig in, find a lift, and then at a 90 degree angle, you're just going to peel up the peel. Peel off the peel, which is why the company's name is Peel Off. And then you're going to be left with this silhouette. Now I'm going to show you how we break this down. I'm going to take and use, let me use this flat brush. What we're going to do first, starting at the base, we're going to be looking inside the glass and determining where our ice cream is going to be. So I'm going to start with some of this burnt sienna. Now watch very carefully. I'm going to come close to the edge, but I'm not going to touch the edge because I'm going to leave that open for my glass. And I'm going to take and create a shape that's going to be for my chocolate part of my ice cream. I'm going to do the same on the other side where I'm going to leave the edge white. You see that? How I didn't go to the ends. And maybe I'll choose a height of here and then say my ice cream ends right about there. So that's my chocolate ice cream. Now I'm just going to fill that in with this color. This is going to start my painting. And this is how you learn to look and see. By leaving these edges open, that will later become our glass. It doesn't make sense right now, but it will. The key to instructions is to follow them. And then once you've learned, you can always change them to suit your own style. But here I'm going to say, this is my chocolate ice cream. Right here. I'm going to clean off the brush. Now, because the canvas is already white, I'm not going to put white paint here yet, but I will be later on. But right now I want to work up here and put some of that pink ice cream or strawberry. So I'm going to take some white, a touch of red, 
and I'm going to create a pink. See that? Now, I'm going to use the same technique, except up here, I'm going to purposely swirl a little bit, like so. Not going to paint to the edge. Get a little bit more. There, that's good. And now I'm going to say the pink part maybe will end about here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually faking out where the strawberry is. You see how I'm leaving the edges open? Again, this side, this side, and all up here. And I'm just going to focus right inside here and just fill that in with the pink. I know this is a crazy way to paint, but trust me when I tell you, it's going to help you immensely on your artistic journey. There. There's the strawberry. All right. Now, clean off my brush. Okay, so now what I'd like to do... So I'm going to switch brushes and go to this little pointed brush. I'm going to grab a little red. And remember, we're creating art, so I'm using artistic license. I'm going to make the stem of my cherry red. See, I'm just going to paint inside the stem. Right here. I'll come back and clean it up later. But right now, what I want to try and teach you is how to establish the areas. Now, up here is a cherry. So why not make the cherry to also show the whipped cream? So I'm going to paint the cherry part, but I'm going to make little ripples at the base to show where the whipped cream is touching the cherry. And what do I mean by that? Well, I could just go like this and say, there's my cherry. But I want to make it so that I start to create little ripples, like some of the cherries shown here, maybe not here, maybe there's it ripples like this. See? See those little jagged edges? They're going to pay dividends later on. They're going to show where the whipped cream is kind of like, kind of rippled a little bit. I know that doesn't make sense. But it'll make sense later. There. So I'm going to stop there and say, there's my cherry. Now, let's have some fun. Now I'm going to take the flat brush. Because I've let this dry a little bit. I'm going to come in with some white. And I'm going to paint where the vanilla part of the ice cream is. It's not going to show up very well, but that's okay. I want it for the coloration and to be able to add a blending mixture to it later. So I'm just going to paint this like so. That's fine if some of the other color gets in. It's ice cream. Ice cream mixes together sometimes. There. Now I'm also going to take and I'm going to try and define now where these cinnamon sticks are. So why don't we take some of the sienna and let's do that. Now the same way we made these little indications here to show the top of the whipped cream, when I get to the base of these cinnamon sticks, I'm kind of going to do the same thing. But in the beginning, I'm just going to paint them solid. So I'm going to paint some of that light color right up in here. And again, I could paint it and stop like that. And it would be fine. But I want to make it so that maybe some of the ice cream is here and some of it's there, like that. So I want to have that shape to it. Like it's plunged right into the ice cream that's thick around it. So I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to paint this one solid just to show where it is. Now you see, it's starting to come together, believe it or not. You see it's starting to build. And that's the lesson here today. How to take a flat object and by adding values and tones to it, we're going to dimensionalize it. So maybe I'll come over here 
and go in here like that. There's my other cinnamon stick with a little ice cream chunk sitting off to the side. Because remember, here we have whipped cream and we have ice cream. So why don't we just do this now? Why don't we take some white and let's just put some color in here. This will be where the whipped cream is going to go. Try to stay away from the red. And this is where the ice cream is going to go. So I'm just going to indicate or put some color in here. So when I add this, this next layer, it'll make sense. Because we're doing it in stages. Doesn't have to touch completely. That's fine. This is where I want to make the separations. So I'm going to focus most of my white color more in the interior, not towards the edges. It's fine. But again, I could I could go on the edges here. I just don't want to touch the red at all. See, just let it let it sit. There's my ice cream. Come down here with that. And this is fine. Soften it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back down here to my chocolate and add another coat of the sienna color to build it up just a little darker. So I'm gonna come here. I'm just going to add another value of Sienna right on top of what I painted the first time. <laughs> Excuse me, just to build it up. There, that looks, ooh, that looks good. Ooh, that looks good. That looks good. And while I'm at it, why don't I take a little bit of red, go inside here, make this pink. It's a little stronger than the first time. And maybe right over in this corner, I'm just going to add a little bit of darker pink value. Right there, just like that. There, that looks good. Let me blend this off. Soften that up. That looks good. Now I want to add some chocolate. Now this chocolate is very important. And the important part of the chocolate is we have to pretend that the edges of the glass are up here also. So what I want to do is when I bring my chocolate, let's say the chocolate starts right underneath the whipped cream. So I'm going to wiggle a line here to say this is where the chocolate is is. I'm going to indicate it first and then we're going to come back and make it stronger. And then I'm going to say it, it actually pours right off to the side. Kind of comes right around here and maybe it stops. But then there's a drip that goes back. And maybe it connects here. And again, we're going to darken this up. So we're just establishing where our chocolate's going to be. So why don't we do this first? Let's just go and whip some more lines here to say this is our chocolate. And then we're going to have some delicious syrupy drips. Okay, let's clean this off because I saw some pink was on it. Now let's start some drips. So now for the drips, using my imagination, I know that there's a, a glass top here. So no matter what I bring down, I'm going to stop where I think the glass is gonna be. So let's say it drips and it stops right there. Let's do one more of those. Let's come over here a little bit. And see there's a nice syrupy drip, nice thick drip that comes down here and it stops at the top over here. And then let's go one more. Let's say that there's a little one that maybe it hangs up in the sky up here. Maybe it just hangs up there. But on the side here, it comes down towards the edge and it stops right there. Now, where I've stopped, I'm saying that's where the glass begins. So I have my basic drip. I know this doesn't make sense, but it will. I have my glass rim. My strawberry ice cream begins. My vanilla and my chocolate. 
while I have some of this on my brush, I think I'm going to introduce a little bit of a darker value right here in this corner. Just like that. It's good enough. Wow, this is really coming on. I know, I know you don't see it yet, but it, it's there. Why don't we take some of this white and a tiny smidgen of blue. That's a good, cool, cool looking color right there. See that light blue right there? Now at the bottom here, I'm gonna start to indicate where the bottom of the glass is with this cool color. Like let's say that there's a cool reflection that comes right over here. And maybe it also shows up right there. And then let's start to establish the baseline around this here. So let's just go like this to give that indication. And maybe there's a little line that runs right along here. Now you see what I've done is I've taken the blue and put it in some very randomly looking but yet specific places to help give off the indication of where the bottom of my Sunday dish is. And I can do the same with a little bit of this blue and start running some of that color right along the edge line of here. Like right along the edge here. Maybe it goes all the way up towards the top of the glass and comes back down like that. That helps establish the side of the glass over here. Now let's do the same for what I'm going to call the rim. So let's just establish a little bit of a space line that goes here, maybe here, and maybe here. And then let's start bringing that down on the other side. So you see the area that I left white, I'm now introducing some blue. That gives a nice cool look and it also gives off the image that is on the glass. And remember this area that we did here? Why don't we just take some of this blue and right on the vanilla part of the ice cream, create like a cool shadow that just sits right here. Maybe it even goes into the pink a little bit or the strawberry. And even right down in here. See, that just adds as, acts as a shadow. Now let's finish up our chocolate drip. Let's go back into the umber. And now we're going to go through the glass and come right on the strawberry and draw a little bit of a dip. That's the chocolate that just fell through and it ended right there. And then maybe there's another piece that goes here. And then maybe there's another piece that goes here. Now what that does is that helps separate the glass rim and the chocolate that's spilling through but it's not thick enough to show through the glass reflection itself. We will come back and darken these up in a little while, but right now we're gonna move on. Why don't we establish some blue in the whipped cream? So let's take a little bit of white, a little touch of blue. You don't need a lot of blue, just need a touch. Just to establish a nice light blue for the coolness. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna pretend that there's some swirls up here. Maybe one right there. Maybe there's another one right here. Maybe there's a little one that goes like that. And maybe there's something that comes on this side like this. And then maybe it whips up around here. And then there's another one that whips up over here. And then maybe it comes right over here. Maybe we'll make something that just goes like that. There. Now that just gives some little fluffy coolness to our whipped cream. Just to give an indication that there's some coolness that's actually going on up there. Now let me clean this off. Now you can't tell me that you don't see the Sunday starting to take shape because it actually, actually is. We're going to take a little bit of white and we're going to soften up some of this pink over here. So we're going to put a little bit of white shadow right along this edge since we moved the dark shadow on that side and maybe even right down in here there's a little bit of a light color to just show a little frost 
See how it's starting to look kind of cool? Maybe we'll take some of this rust color or the sienna color and just run a little bit of a line right along this edge over here, right down to the ice cream, and maybe right along here. Just a shadow that acts as a shadow. We're going to take our little script liner brush and we're going to put a couple of little cinnamon spicy looking lines right here. So maybe there's a line that goes here, another one that goes here, 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 pick up a little bit more color and right along down here. Do the same over here. Up a little bit more color right here right here and right there see that gives our that gives our cinnamon stick a little bit of value maybe it's a little darker right along down the edge like I had before right here maybe right here see how it's starting to come together let's continue working with this brush because what we want to do now is we want to make our chocolate even more chocolier. So let's take some more of this umber. And let's just go right back up in here. And start to introduce some seriously dark chocolate. This is going to get a highlight later on. It's going to look so delicious. I'm using this little brush because I just want to pick up some paint. And just kind of drag it along. We might even come back and do this again. Just to get it even darker. But for right now, I'm just showing you how to take step by step. And just keep working it. See? There you go. There you go. And just let it drip right there. And now we're going to do our drip tips, if you will. So let's just add some darker value right here. A little darker value right here. Trying to just get right up to the edge. And a little darker value right here. There. Let's bring this right down to the edge. <laughs> Like that. And we're going to leave that for a second and we'll come back in a few moments. Ah, excuse me. I think we're catching the cold. Take a little white. Going to add a little highlight line right along the edge here. Like that. And maybe there's a little highlight line right above here. See? See how that gives us a little bit of extra value? I say let's go in one more time with some red. We're going to leave the stem, but we're going to put some more red on our cherry, right? Especially on this side. It's going to make it darker. By adding just a little bit more red right on top. Like that. See that? Clean this off. Take a little bit of white here. Just clean up these edges on the side of my glass. It's going to smooth this out. Like that. Maybe smooth this out. Like that. See? And then let's go back for one more. One more try of some more chocolate. It's going to add a little bit more. Ooh, that's it. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. Look at that chocolate. Told you, look at the syrup. See? So three coats of syrup, chocolate syrup, gave us exactly what we needed for the darkness. Let's go back up here and add some more on this one. Come around. Just take, I'm just taking my time. I'm just trying to lay in the color now. Uh, not to disturb what I already have. Just trying to lay in some more chocolate value. See? Now what you could do sometimes is let your paintings dry. 
I'm just trying to show you an instruction. So I'm actually moving at the same time. I don't want to stop the picture and, and, and dry my painting and then come back because it would seem like I did something that I that I didn't do. I want you to see the whole thing come together in what I call real time. Take a little white. It's going to make a little highlight on my cherry right there. That's a good enough highlight. And there. My painting is actually finished. You could take white on your brush and put highlight on your chocolate to make it look even richer. A little bit of a turn there. Maybe there's a little bit of a turn here. Maybe there's a little bit of a mark right there. See? Then you could come over here right into the... And just do a little bit of a line work like that. Maybe there's a little line that comes right along in here. Maybe there's a little line there. Maybe there's a nice long line that just comes right down the side. Maybe there's a little bit of a line here. Touch there. And a little touch over here. And see that gives the chocolate the look of more deliciousness. And just that simple and just that quick, we've created our beautiful Sunday. Well, I hope you li like it. I hope you enjoyed it. It was fun. I had fun. And don't forget to give us a like on our YouTube channel. And of course, subscribe so that you can get notifications when there's a new video. But that's it for our Sunday. Thank you for letting me paint with you. I hope you had fun. I hope it made sense. And I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye.